Hey random stranger, it's good to have you here with me for the start of k -On season 2. Uh, I'm pretty hyped, but also feeling a little bit strange. I know that there are 20 odd episodes left of k -On, and then of course there's the movie which I fully intend to react to. Um, but I am already mentally preparing myself for the inevitable end. And I don't know about you guys, but that is pretty unusual for me. If you've come from season one, you'll know that I have become quite attached to these girls and as well as their relationships with each other. And so it'll be hard when this series is over, but you know, as in life, right? You got to appreciate what's right in front of you. Um, just enjoy the hell out of it. And uh, I think we're going to have a really good time. As always, a couple of comment shout outs before jumping straight into the next season. Uh, so Tenzin Tenzin expressed very succinctly how I feel about this show. Um, they wrote, I love the dynamic between all the characters and how there's no unnecessary drama. It's just a fun series to sit down and relax to. Yeah, when I, when I think about the shows that I'm currently watching alongside K-On!, I'm so glad that I have it. Anime wise, um, I'm also reacting to Made in Abyss, uh, which is a great show, but provokes a lot of thinking around um, the merits of certain social structures, uh, what makes a human a human, and you know, it has flesh eating monsters. Non anime wise, uh, I'm catching up on Black Sails. I don't know if anyone else is watching it, but uh, it's basically about murdering pirates and brutal politics again an amazing show but just another one that stares right at the underbelly of the worst side of humanity even the books i'm reading i realized just now so i'm reading crooked kingdom which is like uh oceans 11 but set in a fantasy world that also has a cast of cold, jaded, sometimes despicable characters just trying to make it in a really cruel world. Um, so k -On really is a haven in that uh, it's not that it doesn't have drama, but it's that the drama is based on the growth of characters who are just good and support and care about each other while making some awesome music. And, you know, art reflects life. And sometimes we forget that there are good people out there doing really cool and really good things. Um, and thank God that k -On is one of those, I would say, quite rare, timeless shows that taps into that very simple uh, but very wholesome and optimistic aspect of reality. Wow, I need to like get off my k -On soapbox. I just love it so much, this show. Uh, what else? Yeah, some, some great comments on episode 13, Winter Days. Uh, a few of you did point out that it started out using quite unusually dull, somber colors, kind of, I think, emphasizing the little dramas of their individual lives lived separately from each other. And then afterwards, when they all reunite again, that mood just lifts and you get the brightness and the liveliness of the palette return. Again, it's those um, little design details that make a surprising amount of difference on how the show impacts us who watch it. Something else that uh, Ragashingo commented on about details, which I agree with 100%, um, basically k -On has this tendency to drip feed us these wonderful um, character details and episode 13 just wouldn't have had as big an impact on someone who hadn't gone through the rest of the season. Um, so they wrote, we've noted several times now how k -On is light on story. Mostly the girls eat cake, argue, and occasionally play music. It's the tonal shift that you wouldn't understand without watching the series and wealth of little character details in the past 12 episodes that make this episode work so well. Yeah, um, so they used Mugi as an example, Mugi whom I love, and list things about her that we learn progressively, but really like right from episode 1 all the way through to 12. So things like um, she delights in serving people, where at home it's implied that she is always the one being served. 
she never really went to a fast food restaurant before um, they met the other girls. She tries so hard to live a normal life, shooing her servants and butlers and yachts out of the picture so she can be a normal girl. She's always having to stop all her family's employers giving her everything for free. So it is perfect that she puts all that together and takes on a low paying job serving people at a burger restaurant. Um, yeah. I just think that was a beautiful conglomeration of all these details. And I think you could say that um, about every girl as well. So, for example, Ritsu getting all flustered and, and staring off into space over the love letters that she's apparently been receiving um, in episode 13 wouldn't have been as impactful if we hadn't seen 12 episodes of her being just exuding that big, sunny, extremely confident, um, extroverted personality of hers, uh, as well as like her merciless teasing of Mio and the contrast of that to Mio's shy and self-conscious personality. One last thing about episode 13, there was a line that really struck me for some reason. It's Yui who says it just as uh, everyone is meeting up at Mugi's, you know, burger joint and they're filling each other in on uh, what they've been up to separately. And Yui kind of looks around at them and says, oh, you guys are doing all these really cool things. Don't grow up and leave me behind. And I just thought, well, number one, of course, Yui is the Peter Pan of this group, you know, the one who never wants to grow up and just stay in this happy place with her friends living out their youth uh, to the full forever and ever. But also, I think, I feel it might be setting up uh, season two in that the underlying thread of this, se- of this season will be building up to that inevitable emotional moment when they have to go their separate ways because you know they they have to eventually finish high school and probably um head off to different uh universities and actually Asuza is a year younger than all of them so they'd have to leave her behind if anyone's gonna be left behind it's Asuza and now I'm really sad uh and I haven't even started season two yet this is going to be brutal, but um, yeah, that that is my uh, overarching uh, prediction for season two. What else am I looking forward to in season two? Uh, really, it's just to spend more time with each of the girls and um, of course to see their relationships and ships with each other continue to evolve, even though I think uh, they're already quite well established and complex. Uh, I'll probably do an updated version of that crazy character web uh, diagram that I did midway through season one, um, just to see how much more complicated it can get. Uh, but yeah, um, I think I'd like to see how the secondary characters develop as well. So there was a comment from Deshante Thomas that made me appreciate more a character that um, I've personally overlooked a bit, um, and that's Ui. So um, on why Ui is their favorite character, um, oh, and how episode 13 showed that, Deshante wrote, Yui is obviously the most important. She's the leader after all, but there's no way she'd be the way she is without Ui there. Yui can do one thing at a time better than anyone as long as she focuses on it, while Ui can do basically anything, but her only focus is her sister. I really liked that line. That's a really good summary of their relationship. Um, their abilities and personalities are created and maintained by each other. Uh, yeah, that was a very cool take on the sisters. And I also found it fit with the fact that Ui and Yui are very similar looking to the point where Ui could fill in for Yui physically but as soon as she opens her mouth that act just completely disintegrates so their almost identical appearance feels um almost like an inside joke on how appearances can be so deceiving and they're actually really polar opposites to each other or I mean rather like two complementary halves of a whole. I'm pretty certain in season two we'll also get a glimpse of 
or at least meet the members of uh, Sawaka Sensei's former death metal band, which I'm very excited about. Uh, and also, I'm just curious to see if the ships that I'm sailing pretty hard at the moment, so um, the Mitsu ship and also the Asuza Yui one, where they'll go and how far they'll go. Um, thank you to Helena Anhos who shared the full lyrics of the song that Mia left in Ritsu's post box. And after going through them, there is no doubt in my mind that it's a song about Ritsu. There's just no way that uh, those lyrics are not about her. <laughs> um, so, I mean, even, you know, if the shippy stuff we do get is just like cheeky nods from the writers, um, and aren't the main focus, which I don't think they will be. Um, it doesn't really matter because ultimately k is about relationships, you know, ships or not. And that's why I can't wait to kick off this season. All right. Uh, I know it doesn't look like it because my face is generally um, very chill, um, but I am incredibly excited to be starting this and I'm glad you guys are going to be watching it with me. So if you're ready to kick off season two, episode one of k -On, let's do it in three, two, one, play. It's not k -On if we don't start off with Yui running somewhere. Ah, oh, she's in the club room already. <laughs> it's the same piece of toast from last season. She's had that in her back pocket the whole time. I love this. Just that raw guitar sound. She, she writing a new song. She's, I can hear her humming. Uh, starting it off with Mitsu right away. And they're a baby, a Caesar. Oh, this is so nice. the family getting back together again and you again Yui being like the center point with Gita well I think she's stuck <laughs> oh yes I want another show Oh, I go back to season one. Huh? Is that cake? Oh, no, from the toast. Oh, my goodness. Here we go. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love the... It's so cool how they put those instruments up there. The way they run, it's just... This is not an easy song to sing at all. It's so hype. Ritsu is going real hard in this song. I feel like the drums are really a standout in this one. Oh, God. Oh, I love that spinning camera. And they gave us back Mio's magic bass fingers. Thank you, God. So that bit when I died, it was because the slide down the neck of the guitar... You could hear that in the music, but also they animated it perfectly. 
in that one second a Caesar's fingers going down the the neck oh my god damn it the show and its openings I mean a lot happened in the OP that I will have to slowly analyze on second and third watch but I feel like they took the OP from the first season and just turned up the dial, the aggressiveness dial, like 10 times. That was awesome. Slightly spacey. <laughs> this is a great, like, um, short summary of all of their very, very complex characters. Oh, I wonder how these cassette tapes will progress this season. <laughs> Is that the Mona Lisa at the background? Take a gander. Oh no, that's weird. <laughs> oh, how are they going to split them off this time? That's so sweet. <laughs> Ritsu just giving Mia her first heart attack of the year. Shark coming through. I didn't catch any of the characters. <laughs> That's like the attention span of a goldfish. Um, what's Mio thinking? Wait, is she happy of that? She doesn't look happy. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, I love them so much. Whoa. Oh, this is going to be fun. Yeah. Nautica may be feeling, having mixed feelings about this. <gasps> oh. <laughs> wow, everyone is in the same room. This is going to be wild. Yeah, which is sweet now. <laughs> Sawachan. I feel like that's not something that you would normally call a teacher. Yes.
Oh, that says Art Club. Okay, yes. That explains the Mona Lisa. So much the better for her to dress them in all her weird outfits. <laughs> Just having them all in the same room is so much more efficient. Uh, they're talking about the future already. Are they playing for this? Was that Mio being like, Ritu, shave up? <laughs> Those cherry blossoms? Hmm. They even have a school anthem. Oh, I love how you can hear their voice in the back. That's Mio's. Ah, oh, Mugi's voice is so sweet. Of course it is. <laughs> and then when you get to Yui's voice, it's just like, bleh. It's just so distinctive. This is a very wholesome school song. In primary school, we just had to sing the uh, Australian anthem every week. Uh, classic Yui getting distracted by the leaves. Where industrious friends gather together. <laughs> And then Yui just selling the leaves to her friends. Like, this is the most amazing thing ever. Oh, they're going to get more members. <laughs> Nautica's is like, ah, yes, so you are. Okay, well, bye. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'd mind either. I kind of like these five girls. Oh. No, poor Caesar. <laughs> There's a tea ceremony club, but I think our girls have the tea covered. I see he's just still the one holding the whip. Wow. <laughs> you being serious is El Presidente. <laughs> That's so funny. It's okay, it's okay to have some ambition. Oh, 
no. <laughs> Sazin Yan in the pig suit. <laughs> what? <laughs> You gotta complete the sandwich. I mean, the fact that they all thought it was just a good idea again. <laughs> Real talk. Uh, I don't know, I feel like they got lucky with the Caesar, the way that they all pounced on her. I don't think that's going to fly with other people. <laughs> oh my god. Just put on a concert. Do it the normal way, and not the freaky, sinister, criminal way. Again, Mio is just powerless against these three. <laughs> what is it with that voice? <laughs> How dumb is she? That is the question of the century. They're all going to get poached by the other clubs. Ooh. <laughs> Why are they still in the animal suits? I mean, it's better than animal suits. Yes. So maybe go with that. Not the entrapment. Oh, okay, here we go. A Caesar is so determined. Four for a time. <laughs> You're very cool, Yui. Ah. Uh. 
it's so tantalizing the way that they just show us the end of concerts and stuff. I think they just need a certain kind of personality. Hmm, that too. Well, a scissor would have, you know, the keys to how to break in. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what I was saying. Like, it's one thing to admire them from afar, but to actually get into the mix and get to know these crazy bunch of people is something else entirely. What is she thinking? Oh my god, Ritzy. <laughs> oh, and then Asus is gonna hear all of this. So I guess, again, appreciate the five that you have now. It's like the perfect group and to worry about tomorrow when tomorrow comes. I love how they focus on Asusa's little reactions to hearing this. Here comes the hug. <laughs> oh, okay, ending song. Let's do this. It's very cake heavy these OPs and EDs this season. Oh, it's so... This is... Ah, the little captain's hat on Mugi. God, they look so good. God, Mion's VA, um, so I don't know her name, but it's so strong. Oh, 
listen. I love how they um interpolate all these uh random English words in there as well. It's really cute. Is that was that Azunyan or Mio? I can't really tell. <laughs> okay. Let's go to episode two. All right, guys, let's uh, get started with episode two. And uh, I'm hyping myself up for that new opening again. All right, if you're ready, let's play this in three, two, one, go. What did she do? She just tired out from that guitar swing. <laughs> Positive thinking. Emergency meeting. <laughs> of course, it was Sawaka Sensei's costumes. <laughs> That's some elite detective skills there. Couldn't read that note. All right, here we go. I love how they have, um, I think the different colors come up when they focus on each of the girls. I love that dun 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 bit. Just the broken up. Um. Yeah, so they've got the different colors. Blue is very is a very meal color. This part, that part is so hard to sing. I'm just so impressed <laughs> with Yui's VA. And, uh, okay, the bass is also amazing um, in this song. Mm. Like, kind of like with the first OP we got. And that just really distorted guitar in the background. It's just, this song is just, 120% full on um, hype. <laughs> also, is it just me? Or it feels longer than the OP we got in season one. Still going for the Buddha can. <laughs> oh, what are they going to find? Oh, 
Mia's in the ponytail. That's revolutionary. Whose are they? Oh, okay, of course. <laughs> Uh, all the fancy stuff is in the games. They probably are. They should belong in some, um, like the National British Museum or something. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh my god. I was Oh my goodness. Right in the money. Oh, are they gonna dig up Sawako Sensei's past? It's like a old keyboard? They just killed a Caesar with their complete lack of interest. Oh yes, more Sawako Sensei playing, please. Oh look at a Caesar fan going. <laughs> oh. oh no oh I thought her devil side was gonna come out as soon as she made contact with her guitar oh what Yeah, it's got to have sentimental value. Like I've still got all my old violins, even if I don't touch them anymore. Mm, that's true. It's very generous. Wait, what are they? What? <laughs> Let's act like adults, please. <laughs> oh, they're like doing rock, paper, scissors every like 50 meters or something. Oh. <laughs> this is this is Moogie's first time in like a dollar store. <laughs> oh, a home center. Oh. <laughs> That's one more thing of Moogie's dream list. So we we're very happy about this. Honestly, this is one of the best things about this show, and there are many, many good things, but 
seeing Mugi um, expand her plebeian knowledge is amazing. Hmm. It's like she's discovering um fire and <laughs> they're all screwed. Oh my goodness. Oh god. I think someone needs to keep Yui away from those things. Please miss. A Caesar is so done. <laughs> I feel like a Caesar swings back and forth between being the total baby of this group and then like the grandma of this group. <laughs> There's no in between. So cute. How do they end up in a, oh, I guess they have a pet store section. <laughs> Don't do that here. <laughs> no PDAs. <laughs> oh, I don't know what a terrapin is. Why, Yui? <laughs> Yui is so out there. It's it's both scary and um, something. Can't even think of a word. Still thinking about whether they need to recruit more members. Is that a lot? Yeah, it's a lot. Probably not, it's just, it's a classic. Oh, oh this is very nerdy guitar stuff, I love it. Jacaranda wood. Ritzy's face. <laughs> Her brain's overloaded. It already stopped working like 10 minutes ago. Oh, they took the money. Um, <laughs> she's 
incorruptible. They're all corruptible. <laughs> They're such music nerds. I mean, they're all thinking, oh my God. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say, oh, everyone except Mugi. Probably cause she's used to having way more than that in her pocket. Okay, Ui more scary than Asuza. Interesting. Oh, here comes the guilt. They're such bad liars. <laughs> Their eyes. <laughs> uh, Nubal. <laughs> Come on. <gasps> oh, this is... They're so screwed. <laughs> Our hero. <laughs> what has happened? All of them though, man, all of them fell. Mm, that's a tough lesson learned. Yeah, but they were all in the background like cheering her on, <laughs> chug it down. It's tough being a captain. Um, <laughs> whoa, Yui has some interesting inclinations, let's just say.
I mean, maybe in another universe, Yui is a genius. <laughs> Just born at the wrong time. Is she getting sad every time she thinks about how she's going to be alone when they all leave her behind? I love how Yui's just like leaning over McGee and it's the most natural thing in the world. Oh my god. <laughs> they're all so... I love how they all look out for Sousa in their own ways. <laughs> it's so funny. I think it's not really the pig-based turtle that she's into, but because of how much they went out for her and worried about her, that's going to be what she reacts to. <laughs> She's just like these idiots, but they're my idiots. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> Should we try to feed it a hamburger? Ah, uh, another one for the album. God, that episode just gave so many warm, bubbly feelings. Okay, so who is this? That has to be Mio, right? The eye color? Yeah, it's Mio. So, a very sassy Mio. I love how their stepping is like on the beat. So cool. Yeah, it's Mio. Maybe like a future version of Mio. That would be insane. I love that she's got gloves. The one glove on uh on the left hand. And even they even the pick that's in her fingers. God, the details and how they animate these songs. Oh, I love how it just cuts out and then it's just Moogie playing on the keyboard. Nice. All right, how are we all feeling? Um, so it's pretty clear that they're slowly but surely building towards a very emotional end to the show. It's uh, the issue of do they try to find more band members right now? to secure the future of the Light Music Club and also to make sure that Azusa isn't left all alone when the other four girls graduate? Or do they just um, enjoy playing together as a five-person band and spend what time they do have left uh, with each other? So that looming issue was pretty much front and center for both of these episodes. And there's just 
little tinges of sadness here and there, especially when they focus on a Caesar's face. So just preparing for that um, moment and it's just going to be a whole emotional wrecking ball uh, when it does come time for them to say goodbye to each other. But before then, uh, there's quite a few episodes, so we're safe for now. And of course, they stuff these episodes to the brim with all of these funny endearing moments and gags and Moogie discovering the ways of the common people um and I feel like the message is appreciate what you've got just enjoy the moment and I'm definitely going to be doing that for um the next coming episodes I love the new OP and ED of course we've got uh one song each of Yui and Mio being the leads and each of them um, have their own styles as well. So Yui's songs tend to be very sugary and very hype, while Mia's is more like still rocking, but slightly more angsty, sort of reminiscent of when she snuck out to write, you know, lyrics facing a windswept beach and these craggy, gloomy rocks in the distance. So um, even musically, their distinctiveness in character really comes out all in all it was just a great feel-good start to the season and i'm looking forward to getting into some more cool discussions with you guys um and just learning more about kaon and the impact that it had i know that uh for some of you season two was really like uh where the show shone um so yeah i'm looking forward to seeing how things pan out So until next time, I hope you have a fantastic weekend uh, and I will see you on the other side really soon.